Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Monday, late afternoon, early evening. I uh, hope it's been a good one. And uh, yeah, I'll give you an update. Obviously, I've released two videos already today. So go have a look, and look at those anyway. But this one is centred around, well, a potential Tottenham legend you could go with, depending on who you are. Hugo Lloris' situation at the club and, you know, maybe a potential termination of the contract. We do have um, <clears throat> an update around Tangi and Dombele and that situation at Galatasaray along with his loan, as well as some interesting updates around Tosin Adarabayo, which obviously I haven't really spoken about in a little while. So good to talk about him and give you an update around that. Um, yeah, plenty to talk about. I won't dilly-dally, but do subscribe if you're new. And drop a like on the video. It always helps with the algorithm and getting more people to have a look at things that I post, you know. Let's talk, anyway, about Hugo. Um, obviously, we know Hugo now is a part... Well, I say now. At the start of the season, is a part of the 25-man squad for the Premier League season. And we know he's actually the third-choice keeper. And, you know... In reality, the future doesn't lie at Tottenham, right? I think that's fair. I'm not, you know, I don't think I'm going to shock anyone with that information, right? So from Football Insider, they put out from their sources that Tottenham can now terminate Larissa's deal as Postecoglou makes up his mind. Couple of points. First one is if you knew you weren't really going to use him, the is obviously number one. You've used Forster already this season. I would have thought this would have been on the card straight off the bat. That going to the higher ups, like, I'm not going to use him. You know, could we maybe, you know, let him go or could you buy him out or whatever, you know, it is that he could to free up that spot? Because in reality, he really isn't going to make a difference between now and Christmas. Uh, sorry, January. If he does, and obviously I'll eat my words, but. He isn't really, and and you know, for me, I've always been on the on the the bandwagon of just allowing him to leave to pick his own club. He's been here long enough. He had chances to leave to go to better clubs and stayed. So you know, for me, it's you know, he's done right by us. Let's do right by him and allow him that freedom. You know, if you if you move him on for for nothing, and say look, you're allowed to go. You know, sort yourself out. You know, get your club sorted. Blah blah blah. <clears throat> just let us know when you're going so we can say goodbye. You know, that I I think is. A reasonable situation. You're not going to get five, ten, fifteen million for Lloris. You know, you're not really going to get a chance to feed. The guy is past his mid thirties now. You know, he's not exactly he's not exactly going to be around in football for a decade, is he? You know, he's got a few years left. Just allow him to just do what he wants for the last few years, and you know, pick the club he wants to be at, allowing us then that spot to free up. If you wanted to bring in a, a youth keeper, you know, maybe you know, look to get a keeper from abroad that is. You know, a youth keeper, maybe, potentially. Because that does tie in a little bit. And I haven't got it on on my iPad. Um, it does tie into the fact that we are linked to Gavin Bazunu, the Southampton keeper. <clears throat> we were linked to him, I think, a few times before. And actually, I was kind of on the idea that I wouldn't mind him being, you know, potentially Larissa's successor. Now, I, honestly, and you know, ironically, we, we got a certain Bakari that's come in. And, yeah, he's all right, isn't he? He's not too bad. We've done we've done well there, we've done there. I think he's won a few of you over that weren't sure after the Brentford game, but we still could do with the backup keeper. I like Fraser Forster, but I'd like him as my third keeper if I was going to do it that way. You know the way City do it with Scott Carson. You know I think they did it with Richard Wright as well for a little while, potentially even more than a little. Maybe he's still one of the keepers there. I don't know, but in reality, I, I would probably want Fraser Forster to be your third keeper. You know. Invaluable experience of the Champions League, the Premier League. He would give you that sort of English quota as well. You know, those things that, you know, that's why Scott Carson still is a keeper at Manchester City. I like that idea. And I, I don't actually hate the Bazunu guy. Not, that's, that's really rude. Uh, sorry, I don't mind the Bazuni, Bazunu idea of him coming in and, and you know, being and fighting for, for Cairo's spot. Any competition is good competition. Brian Ortega is a very good keeper at Manchester City. He knows he's number two, but he's a very good goalkeeper. Um, I mean, the Arsenal one's a bit of a weird one. That That's not a normal situation for your keeper situation. But if we want to be frank, we need to, obviously two in every position. We don't really have that keeper, to be fair. So 
Depends on the, the value of a Bazunu, to be fair. Um, moving on a little bit to Ndombele. Obviously, look, not going to spend a ton of time on this, but we know, obviously, the situation of how the manager wasn't really sure that he wanted him. The owner really wanted him. He's not really done anything whilst at Galatasaray. He's not really performed up to what they expected. The fans aren't really keen on him that much. But Sport Witness put out that uh, from Tanya Dombele, I will not leave. Uh, the Tottenham man sends clear message to manager during a private meeting. He's determined to prove himself at Galatasaray. <clears throat> One, it's a good thing for him. You know, he does have a reputation of being a bit lazy, thinking that he's better than, you know, where he's out, whatever you might regard that as. But it is a good thing for us that we do obviously have the situation that, you know, they were talking about terminating his loan, but actually we might have the situation where if Galatasaray, if he is trying to buy into the system, he is trying to buy into, you know, the manager and what he's trying to do, then actually that works out for us as well. It's not just him, it is us as well. We, you know, we obviously still have that sell-on option at the end of the year that we're hoping, you know, Galatasaray pick up, you know. For him, I hope that this is genuine. He, I mean, look, he's probably got a month to save himself because Galatasaray are desperate to get rid of him from what we've seen already this season and what we've heard this season. But for him, I hope it is true because I do want him to salvage his reputation, salvage his career because it is going down the drain at the moment. And maybe someone's got through to him and said, mate, you're throwing it away. Come on, let's buckle down. Let's let, show him what you got. Like The way I look at it is, if he plays up to 100% visibility, he's the best player in the Turkish league. He would then go and get another big move. Simple as that. And maybe we tell him and we only get 15 million. We look at it and go, that's a really bad move in the end. He's ended up being worth 40. Obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But hopefully for him, he is you know, trying to recuperate his image let's chat Tosin Adarabayo so <clears throat> he obviously was a guy we were heavily linked to in the summer and so were Monaco Monaco were really up to get him but for some reason they couldn't come to an agreement with Fulham and Fulham actually were quite keen to sell him to Spurs it's a weird dynamic when you think of things you always try and move him abroad so you never have to deal with the player in terms of play him again you know He's only made one appearance this season, which was the two-all draw against Arsenal. So he's not really played. You know, he, he very much is, you know, sitting in with the under-23s or the reserves or whatever. He's not really playing, right? In, this comes from Sport Witness again, who... It was quite interesting what they put out. But basically, they put out that... Um, from... And I've, talk, I've said this before, and I might butcher it again, but... Romagiolo Rossa, I've probably mullered it, basically it's a big publication to do with Roma, and it said that he's apparently been offered to Roma in the January transfer market. A couple of things. It's bad news for us when it comes to Dyer, okay? Because obviously with Dyer, it's kind of one guy that was touted to potentially go there because of the connection to Mourinho. Obviously... For, for me, I, I, I wanted him in, in the summer, right? Now, I, I would still have him now because he is going out of he's going out of contract this coming summer coming, right? This coming summer coming. What am I doing? English is clearly failing me in this video. Terrible. The moustache looks weird. The English skills are poor. You know what I mean? I would still I would still want him. He's cost effective, which is right up Levy Street. It's right up, you know, our transfer budget situation street. You could still get a Caceres. And maybe they look at Lloyd Kelly and go, is Lloyd Kelly, compared to Tosin, much better? If he's not, then the cost effective thing isn't to go for a guy that, you know, Bournemouth won at 20 odd million for him. We can get the guy that we can get for about 5 million. And between Caceres and, um, and Tosin, he costs about 10 million pounds which in today's market is, is very good value. You know, and I think maybe Tosin could look at it and go, well, Van der Ven's missed a couple of months. Romero's missed three games with uh, suspension. He, he, he's good for an injury or two per season. We know that. Obviously, since, you know, this season, he's not actually not had to deal with it. He's, I know he had that concussion first game, but since then, really, he's been scot-free health-wise. You know, you could kind of sell Tosin on the whole idea of, look, you're going to get time. Look, we're missing them every now and then. 
Had he been had he been signed this summer, he'd have played a lot of football. It's one you know potentially might get away. And, you know he will do right well at Roma. But, you know, Smalling looks like he's probably going to Saudi Arabia. They need to replace him. He'd do well at Roma. He'd be probably cheaper than Smalling as well. And Smalling's done well there, but he's the perfect modern day football footballer for centre back. You know. But hey, anyway, guys, I think I hope you did enjoy. Drop a like on the video if you did. Always helps the algorithm. Hit me in the comments section below. Look, you've got the toast in the Dara buyer situation. You're hoping Spurs might still be in there. I hope we are. I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys think. Obviously, you've got the situation around Lloris. Are you happy for us to kind of just say, look, go and sort yourself out. We'll terminate the contract. We'll sort everything out, blah, blah, blah. Go and get yourself a club. Would you be happy with that? I personally would. Let me just see what you guys think of that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> On that as well you know subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more but anyway guys that's the end of the video i'll see you all very very soon take care guys